The holiday shopping season is in full swing, and tech devices top many wish lists once again. Consumers are deciding among several new tablet computers, gaming systems, and mobile phones, but investors also have some decisions to make as we approach the end of the year. Which technology stocks will give your portfolio a boost, and which will weigh it down? Tony Sagami explains why the answers may depend on demand from halfway around the world. Rudy Martin focuses on one segment of the industry that affects all the others. And Nihilus Mativ tells us why income investors should no longer fear the tech sector. Plus, Jen Amos presents the picks and pans of all the Weiss research editors. And TheStreet.com Scott Moritz lays out the trends and challenges facing technology companies in the future. All that coming up right now. From our studios in Jupiter, Florida, Weiss Money Network presents Money and Markets. And now, Jamie Holmes. Hello, everyone. Technology has been one of the best performing segments of the market over the past couple of months. But will this trend continue? And which technology stock should have a place in your portfolio? Joining us on Skype from Bangkok, Thailand with some answers is Tony Sagami, the editor of the Asia Stock Alert newsletter for Weiss Research. Good to see you, Tony. Oh, hi, Jamie. It's a little past my bedtime here, but I'm happy to be on board. Oh, well, we're, we don't want to keep you up too late. T Tony, <laughs> what is your, your overall take on the tech sector right now? Boy, you know, with the sluggish use economy, you really have to look outside of North America for some growth. And the best place for that growth is in Asia. And technology is one of the three items that the U.S. has consistently been a next, net exporter of. Food, airplanes, mainly thanks to Boeing, and technology. So technology is probably the best of the three because the Asians are adopting technology at a very rapid pace. They're almost going from like the abacus to the PC. Uh -huh. And that's why there's such great growth. Tony, how would you tell investors to choose stocks in the technology sector? Sure. You know, there's, there's two simple rules, I think, to really being a successful tech inve investor. The first of which is you want to focus on American companies that have a very effective China strategy where they have made China an important part of their marketing program and are doing great business there. On the other hand, you want to stay the heck away from American companies that find themselves in heated competition against low-cost Asian producers. That's a battle they cannot win. Okay, so, so give me some examples here of companies that fall into those two categories then. Sure, just last week we had a couple of companies reporting uh, their uh, report earnings. Uh, the first of which was Applied Materials. They make the equipment that semiconductor companies use to produce chips. Now, Applied Materials gets 74% of the revenues from Asia, so you can see that that's a very big number. But they're taking it so serious that they picked up and moved their chief technology officer, Mark Pinto, uh, and his young family from Silicon Valley to Beijing. It's the first American company ever to do that, and it shows you how focused they are and how they get what's going on in China. Now, on the other hand, Intel, great company for, for decades in the U.S., but now they find themselves competing against two of the largest chip producers in the world, both of which are in Asia, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor and United Microelectron. Those, uh, and the problem with Intel is to leverage into Dell, which is also in the U.S. market. So they get those two problems, and that's a problem for Intel and an opportunity for applied materials. Tony, which segments of the tech industry would you be particularly bullish on? Well, there's two I'd really take a look at. The first would be the communication devices, mainly cell phones and other wireless devices. Uh, and what you need to do is almost take a cell phone and break it on the ground and look at what's inside the display screens, the chips, uh, the graphic processors. All of those devices are very, very profitable and have great growth ahead of them. And the other thing that people really need to know about cell phones in Asia, uh, especially in China, the cell phone has replaced the computer. Most Chinese can't afford a PC, so their cell phone is the computer and how they get to the Internet. Uh, the second area would be what I call electronic doodads. And we know all these things, the MP3 players, the cell phones, uh, video games, the doodads that uh, people have fun with. And there's uh, two companies you should take a look at. Qualcomm is doing great business on the communication cell phone side. And, of course, Apple uh, is a big, big winner, not just in the U.S., but especially in Asia. What about some uh, Asian technology stocks that U.S. investors may not know about? Yeah, you know, and a lot of those are traded right here in the U.S. Let me give you a few examples. Baidu.com is one they may not know about. Now, it has over a 90% market share of the search business in China. So it really is the Google of China. So if you, want to pro if you really want to target that search business as part of your portfolio, Baidu is the one you should take a look at. Uh, and if you wanted a more easy way to take a look at ETFs, there are two that uh, you could take a look at. 
There's the Global X China Technology ETF, the ticker is CHIB, or the Guggenheim Alpha Shares Technology ETF. Both of those own companies like Baidu, uh, NetEase, which is kind of the Twitter of China, uh, BYD Corp, that electric vehicle company that Warren Buffett owns 10% of, and like Tencent Holdings, which is like the PayPal of China. All right, thank you, Tony. Stick around. We're going to bring you back a little bit later in the show to discuss your strategy with Scott Moritz at thestreet.com. Thanks again. Thank you. For a closer look now at one of the biggest segments of the tech industry, we want to bring in Rudy Martin. He, of course, is an emerging market specialist for Weiss Research. Hello, Rudy. Always good to see you. Hello. Rudy, what is your reaction to what Tony had to say on the tech sector? Well, I agree that the growth in the technology area is going to come from emerging markets. And I also see uh, the growth in uh, technology coming from mobile phones and especially the, the components that go into those mobile devices. Uh, there's one segment of the market that I'm focusing on, and that's the semiconductors. If you look at the Philadelphia Stock Exchange Index, uh, uh, the semiconductor index, that's up nearly 26% over the last year. And there's a lot of value in some of those names. Okay, so, so why focus so heavily then on semiconductor stocks? Well, two reasons. One is the, uh, the surge in mobile sales, as I said, uh, and that means uh, sales to Asia. Uh, but the other reason is cars. Each car produced now has about $300 or so of, of chips in it, and the companies that make electronics uh, for these cars should see a lot of growth going forward. Now, Apple's a stock that everyone likes, including Tony, and it's one of the biggest stock stories around, but one of the better ones, I think, is General Motors' IPO. Uh, you know, and what do Apple and GM have in common? They both rely on semiconductors. So as mobile companies and automo automobile companies uh, see their increase in production go up, uh, companies that supply chips will also see an increase in demand. All right, Rudy, give us a, a couple of stock picks among the semiconductor companies that you would go ahead and recommend to investors. Well, I have two basic ones. Um, the first is tied to the mobile industry and the second one to the auto industry. Uh, Cirrus Logic, ticker symbol CRUS, develops chips for a broad range of uses such as smartphones, portable media, and the energy industry. That stock is up 188% over the past year. It has about 182 million on uh, the balance sheet in cash and its revenues grew over 80% in the last quarter. It just completed a 20 million share buyback and announced plans to buy another $80 million. So I really like the way management's using that excess cash. The second one is ST Microelectronics, ticker symbol STM. The company produces chips for telecommunications and consumer electronics, but uh, also has clients in the auto industry as well. Very importantly, 60% of its customers are located in Asia. It's been trading at a discount relative to its peers and uh, the reason for that, it's been posting losses of five in the last seven quarters, but with the momentum of earnings now in that industry and at that company, I expect it to have over $3.5 in cash uh, on the balance sheet at year end when it reports in January and the higher valuation. All right, then give me some areas of the semiconductor industry that you would tell investors just to stay away from. You know, when you think of semiconductors, you think of Taiwanese semiconductor companies, avoid those. They're an automatic out. Okay, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, United Microelectronics, uh, there's a lot of capacity coming into that industry with global foundries and uh, the Middle East money behind them. Intel just announced that they're uh, producing their own chips on a specialty basis, and you're also seeing uh, kind of a glut in the, in the pipeline. So second half of 2011, this semiconductor foundry story uh, is over with. So you probably want to avoid from those. All right, Rudy Martin, always a pleasure. Okay, thanks. Many income investors have stayed away from technology stocks in the past because, well, they can be volatile and most haven't historically paid dividends. But according to our next guest, that may be changing. Nihilus Mativ is the editor of the Dividend Superstars newsletter for Weiss Research. He joins us on Skype from Chad's Ford, Pennsylvania. Hello, Nihilus. Hey, Jamie. Nihilus, uh, what are you seeing from the tech sector right now? Well, I think you know what a lot of investors miss is the fact that uh, you know, tech companies now are paying substantial dividends, uh, many of them. And I think that's a big departure from what a lot of investors associate these stocks with. So uh, their track record overall, I mean, is it a place to be? I think uh, if you're looking for income, you know, you can now turn to some of these companies and get decent yields. Um, again, which I think uh, comes as a surprise to a lot of people. Given the, the past tech bust, the companies that have survived have really looked uh, forward to trying to hand out payments to attract investors and to also demonstrate that they have financial strength. All right, so which parts of the tech sector are, are most suitable for income investors? Well, in terms of the industry where I see the most dividends right now, I'd have to say it's semiconductors. Uh, a lot of these companies, you know, are, are cash cows, produce uh, materials for a lot of basic consumer devices all the way up to uh, really high-end, um, you know, large-scale projects. So um, that's probably my favorite at the, at the moment. Give me some examples then. Give me some company names. 
Sure. Well, in terms of financial strength, um, a company I've recommended in the past is Texas Instruments, and that's sort of one of the big blue chip names of the semiconductors. But there's also smaller players uh, like Linear Technology, Microchip Technology, um, and you know those companies have yields up to four percent right now, and uh, again make a, an array of products that. Uh, go into both consumer devices and also uh, other things that people may not be familiar with. Now, let's give me a, give me a few names here, some dividend-paying tech stocks that are that are outside of the semiconductor industry. Sure. Well, once you move outside, you got names like Microsoft, which is really the Coca-Cola of tech names. Uh, they produce a product that most people can't live without at this point. Sell across the globe, and um, you know, again, have more money than they know what to do with. So that's a company that has been paying dividends for a few years now, and uh, will continue to, I, I believe, increase its dividends substantially. Uh, any any areas then of the tech sector that you would tell investors just to simply stay away from? Well, I don't really think in those terms. Um, you know, I'm really only looking for companies that produce good income. But if I had to name an industry that I, I personally wouldn't want to be in, it would probably be the hardware makers. Um, again, you know, they they produce things that Chinese uh, companies can manufacture at a much uh, cheaper discount, and uh, so I don't think they have any kind of a competitive advantage. All right. Well, what about somebody like an Apple then? I think Apple's probably the exception to the rule. They have a certain cachet out in the marketplace right now, um, are clearly you know, hitting it out of the park in terms of their product lineup. Um, again, you know, for an income investor, that's not the stock to be. But if I had to make an exception, it would definitely be Apple. All right. Now, let's move Thank you, sir. Thanks, Jamie. Coming up next, we'll get more picks and pans in the tech sector with Jen Amos. And later, the Street.com Scott Moritz joins Tony Sagami for a strategy session that you don't want to miss.